Good morning. Reverend Kim here for your morning reflection on this Holy Saturday, April 11th of 2020. Uh, I am Reverend Kim. I'm the minister at Riverview United Church and Nine Mile River United Churches in East Hans, Nova Scotia, coming to you live from my house in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia this morning. Oh, everybody's getting online very quickly this morning. It's good to see you. Good morning, Donna. Say hi if you're here, everyone. I see Donna. I see a number of you popping in. So a holy Saturday, that time between. So we're going to do a little bit of scripture, a little reflection, and a little music, and then we'll go out into the rest of our day. Good morning, Anne and Ruth and Kevin. Good to see you. Oh, Kevin, everybody should go check out the website today. If you didn't get your newsletter yet, um, I've been working away at our website in the background of things, of everything else that's happening, and there's been an update, and all of the pictures that you see on our website, um, unless they're stock photos, are from Kevin Rand. So thank you, Kevin, for the wonderful pictures that are on our Facebook. So yeah, if you want to go check out our, our Facebook, it's, um, it's being built. Uh, by me as we speak. Uh, well, not as we speak right now, but uh, as, as we go through our time. And so elmsdalecooperativeministry.com is our space for our new website. Please go check it out. That's also where you can find, under online worship, you can find the order of service for tomorrow morning um, at 10 o'clock is our Easter service together and so I'll encourage you to download our order of service if you haven't um, and if you work on a computer you can always have it two screens up you can have the service up on one screen and the um, order of service up on the other good morning Kay and Fern and Susan it's good to see you all this morning I will also tell you at 6 30 a.m. tomorrow morning yes 6 30 a.m. We will be um, meeting live for a sunrise service. For those of you that are early risers, please feel free to um, get up and find me on Facebook. I'll be here. I'll be here at 6.30 a.m. for something very similar to what we've been doing at 10 with a couple of more, uh, a couple more tunes, I think. And hopefully I'll be outside. I haven't tested that yet, so I'll get a chance to test that and see if I can get a live feed going from outside. So... That should be exciting. And um, let's get started for today, shall we? I'm going to read two readings for you this morning. The first one is from Matthew. It's from Matthew 27. And it's the final verses of that chapter. We've been reading from the message version of the Bible. I'm going to read from that version for this in Matthew. It says, After sundown... The high priests and Pharisees arranged a meeting with Pilate. They said, Sir, we just remember that that liar announced while he was still alive, after three days I will be raised. We've got to get to that tomb and seal it until the third day. There's a good chance his disciples will come and steal the corpse and then go around saying he has risen from the dead. Then we'll be worse off than before. The deceit surpasses surpassing the first the final deceit surpassing the first so Pilate told them you will have a guard go ahead and secure it the best you can so they went out and secured the tomb sealing the stone and posting guards so it's important to hear the beginning of that um, verse after sundown this was Friday this was Friday in the week and Friday, um, just a couple of minutes after sundown, until Saturday evening when the first three stars appear in the sky, is the Jewish time of Shabbat, or what we might think of as Sabbath. And that is a very um, holy time of rest that comes from a deep, deep tradition in the Jewish culture. And that would come for a thousand years before for Jesus. So the people wouldn't have been digging around and trying to open tombs and hide bodies. They would be busy. The time just before sundown, they would be preparing their house. They would be washing. There is no work that happens um, between, between that sundown on Friday evening 
to uh, sunset uh, or sun yeah sunset on Saturday really when the first three stars appear in the sky so no work and, and no work on your your own self all bathing happens on the Friday the only thing that happens on Saturday is rest rest and eating and that's it it's kind of sounds like what we've been doing doesn't it like just rest and eating well hopefully we've been washing um, I want to read to you from Exodus because that helps us to understand how holy and important this day was. Um, the Mosaic tradition of, of Judaism says that this idea of Sabbath traces all the way back to, um, to the creation story when God rested on that last day. And so let's read from Exodus 20 verses 8 to 11. This is in, um, in the Torah, but reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or alien residents in your town. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed them with Sabbath day and consecrated it. So this is a holy time. This is a holy time of resting and waiting. And that is where we are. That's where we find ourselves on this holy Saturday. And that's where um, Jesus' disciples and followers would have, would have found themselves too. Their Lord had died. Their master had died. And they, they couldn't do anything. So we heard yesterday that Joseph of Arimathea prepared the body, placed him in his own tomb. The women watched at the tomb for as long as they could, but then they had to get home. It's really important for us to remember they had to get home. They're supposed to be in their home. They're supposed to be resting. They're supposed to be waiting. And that's where we are today. Waiting to see what happens. Waiting to see what God will bring. Waiting to see what will happen. A friend of mine was sharing that on her own Facebook this morning, Michelle Bull, Reverend Michelle Bull, thank you, Michelle, um, that that's where we find ourselves too, in this moment of waiting, unsure what's happening, unsure where we are in the world. And not just because we're waiting Good Friday into to Easter, but that we're waiting in this, we're literally stuck in our homes, many of us, and we're waiting to see what happens with the world. The world is in a, in a state of pandemic, Fear, panic, worry, uncertainty. And so we are in what feels like one long holy time, one long Sabbath of waiting to see how this will unfold. So with that in mind, I was thinking about um, I was thinking about what the disciples and followers and family of Jesus would have been going through. And they, their friend, their, their son, their brother, their master had died. And so for all of us who have had someone die recently, who are grieving the loss of Jesus today, grieving the loss of mothers and friends, sisters, brothers, hear this beautiful beautiful blessing from John O'Donohue's book, To Bless the Space Between Us. On the Death of the Beloved Though we need to weep your loss, you dwell in that safe place in our hearts, where no storm or night or pain can reach you. Your love was like the dawn, brightening our lives, awakening beneath the dark, a further adventure of color. The sound of your voice found for us a new music that brightened everything. Whatever you enfolded in your gaze quickened in the joy of its being. You place smiles like flowers on the altar of the heart. Your mind always sparkled with the wonder at things. Though your days here were brief, your spirit was alive, awake, complete. We look toward each other no longer.
From the old distance of our names, now you dwell inside the rhythm of breath, as close to us as we are to ourselves. Though we cannot see you without, out, with our outward eyes, we know our soul's gaze is upon your face, smiling back at us from within everything, to which we bring our best refinement. Let us not look for you only in memory, where we would grow lonely without you. You want, you would want to find you, you would want us to find you in presence, beside us when beauty brightens, when kindness glows and music echoes eternal tones. When orchids brighten the earth, darkest winter has turned to spring. May this dark grief flower with hope in every heart that loves you. May you continue to inspire us to enter each day with a generous heart, to serve the call of courage and love until we see your beautiful face again in that land where there is no more separation, where all tears will be wiped from our minds and where we will never lose you again. Beautiful words from John O'Donoghue as we remember the death of the beloved. I'm going to leave you in just a moment with Wait for the Lord, and we'll, um, we'll go out to me singing that song. I might keep singing it after I hit finish for a little while. Um, I'll remind you 6.30 a.m. I'll see you 6.30 a.m. for you early risers for a sunrise service, and 10 a.m. for the uh, for others who prefer a um, or want to also come to our Easter Sunday service. There is no meditation tonight at 730. Um, there are a lot saved. Please feel free to listen to one of those again. Um, I am also taking Sabbath uh, today with the exception of, of fine-tuning my sermon and a few things for tomorrow, which I enjoy and give me great, great joy to do. So that's what I'll be doing today. Um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And um, until then, wait for the Lord, God's day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Wait for the Lord, God's day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Wait for the Lord, God's day is near. Wait.